come straight for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back. Yes, sir. Yes, because sir. we know what it represents. It represents everybody here you see yes, and everybody you can't that we've talked about. I'm here to strain with you, man. I swear to God, I'm here to strain with you. Let's go. Everything you got, strain with everything you got. Let's go. Let's go. Bills on three. One, two, three. Bills. You're listening to the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show with your host, Joe Miller. There we go. What is going on, everybody? It's so good to have you. Welcome into the Off Tackle with John Phoenix show on the Buffalo Rumblings Vodcast Network, presented by Picasso's Pizza. Did you see that today? I did. All of us. How are, about that? We're, we are all now uh, represented. We are we are sponsored by officially Picasso's Pizza, which is uh, one of the what most famous famousest one of the wildly popular pizza places here in buffalo new york uh and uh yeah it's good to be here my name is joe miller i'm the host of the show and sitting next to me right over there is the inevitable john fina john how are you i'm doing great joe miller i'm doing fantastic how are you doing uh actual football things are happening football wow. are happening so uh i would go as far as to tell you that uh i'm excited just in general but uh we are back it's a brand new season the 2022 season is upon us we've got a couple weeks here to kind of roll through and muddle through preseason preseason games and training camp and roster stuff and who's playing and who's hurt and who played for how long and what football game and what camp battles are important to us and we also have some brand new sponsors uh one of uh, one of which is the actual primary sponsor of the show the show is now brought to you by the market dominator who is a very good friend of mine and yours and we are excited about i'm excited about it because he's now sponsoring this show and the hump day or i'm sorry the uh, overreaction show which is great uh, we are also sponsored now by House Capital. We're going to get to them in a second. So this is just some new things. And then, of course, because we love it and we love him, Q42 is still here. We love Q42. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's hashtag Girls Mafia, right? With a new formulation, too. With the, Yes, the mustard sauce, which my wife was upset about. The, the new mustard sauce, not new, the mustard sauce is now thicker, uh, which Iman wanted, was was working on. And Beth, my wife, loved it kind of thin and runny i don't know what she was using it to cook with but she kind of liked the the original consistency and i told her well it's better now so would you agree with that i think it's all great frankly i mean you know when you are the father of invention you obviously have the right to tweak it any way you want if you wanted it to be a little thicker i think the the flavor profile is the same so yeah yeah. it's a it's a win for us and if it's a win-win for iman and q42 uh and bridget i'm all for it Awesome. Well, we got a bunch of people rolling in. So Amanda is in the, in the house. Daniel Gowrie's is in the house. Tracy, oops, it's slipping on me. Tracy's in the house. Karen Idzik is in the house. Everybody, Xavier is in the house. Everybody's uh, welcome to be here. Brian Belser uh, from House Capital is in the house. It's good to have you. Mark Johnson uh, is in the house. Mark, it's good to see you. But uh, let's do this. Before we get this thing started, let's let's hear from our first spon- sponsor, the actual title, title sponsor of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, sit tight for a second uh, as I bring you John Spascheck. Red 19, blue 21, set up. Oh, oh, hey guys, hey guys, I'm not Josh. I'm John Spascheck, the market dominator, the proud sponsor of the John Phoenix Show, hosted by the voice Joe Miller. And folks, the great thing about why we love our quarterback, not only is he awesome, but here's the reasons why. He's super disciplined, he's an incredible hard worker, He actually is very intelligent and he has a ton of focus. These are some of the qualities that my good man John Fina used on the field to help the Bills get to Super Bowls so many years ago. But now in real estate, I'm the guy who helps you win. This is what we do. We educate, we advocate, we negotiate, and we dominate. So if you want to win in this market, you call me 716-570-3298. Go! Let's go, Buffalo! Is John Spascheck, ladies and gentlemen. I, I mean, that was fantastic. I mean, great delivery. You know, I mean, 
That was that was truly good. I hope he got that in one take. And if he did, man, I'm telling you, that was out, that was outstanding. I've been in the business for a little while on the analyst side. And I can tell you, you know, there were times when you nail it right away. And then there are other times where you just fumble through it. And you're on like, take 19 intro. <laughs> I just that think, was terrific. I think he just had a lot of fun. I, I think it would oh, have come yeah. down to it. John Spascheck just had the most fun of all of us. And like kind of jealous, kind of jealous. Kinda the, jealous. Days. the good news is I have like four of those. So <laughs> four different ones, That's all awesome. varied. That was the one that I picked. So, but yeah, John Spascheck, great friend of mine, great friend of John's. Uh, I am actually a customer of John. He is, I've used John in the past. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, uh, please do us a favor. Call John 716-570-3298. Let him know that John Fina sent you. Not, not just the voice. That's Let right. him know that John Fina sent you. But That's John, right. how how talk me through the feeling right now? So um, football is beginning, right? It's it's the precipice of a new season. The, the 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 dew is on the grass. It's all things. Behold, all things have become new. Talk to me about where are you at from an emotional standpoint as football is like brimming. Well, I mean, like everybody else who's on the call, listen to the download. I mean, I've just been anxious for the season to start like 24 hours after the season ended. Right. And in the moves that are made, you know, you can't help it. You just start building up this, I won't call it anxiety, but anticipation. It's a little different when you're a player and I'm enjoying it so much as a fan now. It's just, it's kind of this overwhelming feeling, you know, in the off season, you're like, what'd they do today? What'd they do today? Right, right. And when you're a player, you know, you look at the beginning of training camp with a little bit of, a little bit of dread, uh, you know, cause it, it can be a slog, but you also with anticipation, you know, when you're coming off a good year, to connect with your teammates, you know, to see how they've been, to see, you know, babies born and houses purchased and, you know, just how, uh, you know, younger guys mature and uh, older guys continue to lend, mm -hmm. you know, great coaching advice and become great mentors. So, you know, it's mixed emotions for me. I, I still get a little bit of you're a player, it's camp, but I, I enjoy it much more as a fan. Yeah, it's wild because I always – I've talked about it a lot. I, I, I've spent most of my life wishing my summer away, right? Because it, it's it's always, it's the dark days of June and July, like mid-June through July generally, or at least it was traditionally. And you find yourself wishing your summer away, and then finally summer, not as over, but camp opens, and then you just you, you can't wait to get to the season. And I don't know how other people are, fans are, but for me, I literally will get sad as four games are gone, and I'm like a quarter of the season's over. And then like eight <laughs> games are gone. And I'm like, half the season. How, how is half the season over already? Like, how is this possible? And then as it's waiting. Bro, you, it's like you're writing your own folk song here. <laughs> I need a banjo and an upright bass. And like, right? literally, we can. It's like that Joe, that Joe Cocker song. A quarter <laughs> of my life is almost past. A quarter. I'm halfway home, babe. I am halfway right. home. So it's it's interesting as a fan. How are you as a player? Um, and I don't want to talk about training camp stuff yet, but knowing that it was it was brimming. What, what did you what, how did you spend your off seasons? That's a good, that's an interesting question that I didn't think of until literally right now. How did you spend your off seasons as a player? Well, you know, they always they always ended on a, I guess a negative note, right? We, I never won the Super Bowl, sometimes didn't make the playoffs and 31 it teams takes a, 31 teams on the in the season that way though. That that's true. Right. That's true. Right. You know, you got you take a little time of reckoning. Mm -hmm. You know, you you go through this and fans do it, right? They're upset for a few days. I think for players, you know, there's this you're maintaining this fever pitch throughout the season. This high level of mental, physical capacity, mm -hmm. recovery, everything, you know, and you still have a family and you still have a life and all that kind of stuff. So probably, you know, for the first three weeks, you just kind of want to not have any stimulus. You know, you're looking for low stimulus. A lot of guys will go to the beach or just go home and kind of disappear, disconnect. And then you start looking at what your off-season workout schedule looks like. You know, you could take a couple of weeks off, but you really got to get back into the gym. And as anybody who trains knows, when you take too much time off, mm -hmm. you know, percentages of strength start to slip. Right, right. Uh, and for right. me, you know, staying big was not an easy task. So I could drop 10 pounds literally in a week. So 
I couldn't run the risk of dropping 20. I'd get back into the gym just to start kind of working through what aches and pains still were lingering. And if there was anything, I'd, you know, get back in touch with the training staff and say, hey, you know, I still got this nagging shoulder problem. And if I had to see a doctor locally, you know, to follow up on the exit physical or interview, as it were. And then you just start plotting through the off season, you know, making sure you don't miss workouts and, you know, making sure that you're making the gains that you're scheduled to make and and uh, just kind of dialing it in for the first, whatever, mini camp or OTA that you got coming up. Were they as incessant about keeping you guys on a program? Uh, I think Rusty Jones was the guy, wasn't he back then? Was it Rusty Jones that was your your – uh, your conditioning coach, were they very, what's the word, just in your business on what you could eat, not eat, stuff like that, like they are today? Uh, I think it's more today than it was then. I mean, you know, dietary science, strength and conditioning science has really grown immeasurably. And then you look at how individualized it's become. Right. So, I mean, different diets, different strength programs for different players, different muscle groups that you're developing. It's become extraordinarily scientific, something that I probably would have enjoyed and preferred back when I played. But Rusty was, did a great job. And yes, you know, there were there were check ins. You'd call the younger players. They really tried to keep around in the offseason just to make sure that that development didn't slip, that, you know, you really kind of focused in on, look, you're a professional now. You know, right, it's, right. It, it, most people call you a football player, but you are a professional. Right. You know, you're high up in a company delivering a product. So you know, you would, you, you kind of get a little, you get enough rope to hang yourself. Right, right. You come back and, and you measurably don't, you haven't done the things that you needed to do. And you're going to get a, you're going to get a tongue lashing. Gotcha. So, so they break out the rotary dial phone, right? Because it was yes. the stone ages. John. And then, but it took like three minutes for the call to reach from Buffalo to Arizona. You know, right? And it's, there were people like plugging those things in. You know, hold for you know Tucson. And, and uh, the question is, is Bell could you, telephone. Could you hear the pin drop like Sprint used to say you could? So, John, yeah. it's uh, Rusty Jones or Rusty Jones's assistant to the assistant to the assistant, and we just want to check in and make sure that you still weigh three hundred and ten pounds. Did you ever lie? Well, there was always an expectation of slide that just ask you what your weight is, you know, and I always hovered in the off season around, you know, 295 to 305, uh, depending on, you know, whatever circumstances. But I, I always showed up to camp probably for my last six years there easily over 310, 315. But is that a crazy number now? Bit. Is that a crazy number to think about for you? Like 310? For, <laughs> for me, yeah. I look at pictures of myself and I'm like, you know, my neck was out to here. Right. I had three three chins. No, you did not. My cheeks were not. wider than my forehead. Do not force me to go get the picture of you on the mountain. That is not true. <laughs> well, shot from an upward angle. And then, you know, down you get that kind of the rolling. Uh... Look, I, hey, I'm not embarrassed of it. I, I, j I just like to speak, you know, truth to power. Mount chins. So if Mount you... chins, yeah. <laughs> The shot hey, from thanks down. for that. I, I almost went a whole day without thinking about that <laughs> that decision, and there you go. Oh, uh, Spud eleven twenty nine says, "Look at his rookie card." I haven't. Seen, so, is there something? What's what is your rookie card? You've got to have a baby face, right? So clearly, you've got a baby face in your rookie card. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I was kind of, I, I hit that kind of high time of cards, so I think I had as many as seventeen cards out there. Holy so God. when people say rookie card, I don't, I don't know what one that was. I think there were eight of them that came out my rookie Stop year. Stop bragging. Stop I'm not bragging. bragging. I just don't know what the reference is. <laughs> I think he's either saying, I'm sure he's, Spud, let us know. Are you saying that you've got a card where he was full of chins? Chins, chin, mm. chins of full. Are you saying you've got a card where he was not so much that he was in shape? I, I guess that's the question. So maybe oh, we'll find here out. Here go the comments. Here, here they come. The <laughs> he says the pro set one. He knows exactly which one he's talking about. <laughs> I highly doubt yeah. that. Is that a, so before we move on, to, we're going to move on to training camp in a second. Is it weird to have football, like cardboard pictures of yourself in the millions? Is that just a yes. weird? It's kind of yes, weird. it is. It was... You know, when they, they when you ink the deal, they send you a sleeve this long of like, I think it was 300 cards. And they said, sign them all and send them back. And I think I opened them up and my family, we were all sitting around the kitchen table. And I was like, holy crap, look at this. 
my parents were like, what? Everybody, it was, it was amazing. The better question is just, did your dad say and sign some of them? And your mom said, I can't sign all 300 of these. Mom, you get this hundred. Dad, you get this hundred. I'll sign the hundred in front of me. No, but I, I have had people send me a card with what was, you know, or take a picture of a card and say, was this your signature? And, and it was certainly not, so... That's awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned into into the Off Tackle uh, with John Fina show brought to you by the Market Dominator. We're going to segue now into uh, just training camp. I've spent the last two days at training camp. I'm actually going again on Tuesday tomorrow. Um, and uh, I think you've got some pointed questions for me just as, as it pertains to that. But bef- before we get to that, we got a quick ad read for House Capital. Yeah. Great new sponsor of uh, this fantastic show that you all love near and dear to your heart from house capital when you're looking to buy a house everyone's got a guy might need work done on the roof your buddies certainly got a guy you need an inspection i know someone and when you're looking to get your financing together brian belser from house capital can be your guy they help make the mortgage process simple hassle-free and understandable and that is hard to do at house capital Their preferred relationships with some of the top lenders give you the edge up on getting the financing you need. Take it to the house with House Capital. I love it. That's a good good read. So, and Brian is a good friend of mine as well. Brian also, uh, I'm a customer. And there is a disclaimer. Oh, let's hear it. House, a registered mortgage broker in NYS, Department of Financial Services, all loan arranged through third-party providers, equal housing opportunity, (laughs) House Capital 500, Pearl, NMLS 1549644. (laughs) Just like on the radio. Just like on the radio. So that was good. So uh, uh, also, I did not say this at the top of the hour or at the top of the show. Uh, like and subscribe. We're Super Chat Live. So if you want to Super Chat, Super Chat. If you, want to, if you want to ask John or me a question, that'd be great. So I think you've got some questions prepared for me. You've got some topics. Uh, this, so we're going to do a little role reversal uh, in this show where you're going to ask me some questions as it pertains to what I have been witnessing uh, at Bill's training camp at St. John Fisher. And by the way, it was hot today. Holy cow, was it hot today? <laughs> the guy I live in Tucson, Arizona, <laughs> and you're crying about it being hot. Stop it was, with the it kicking. Was, it was 84. It was hot today. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, it was hot. I melted. I almost melted. So what well, do you got for me? What do you got for me, bro? Well, you know, like everybody in the mafia, that first round just kept going, right? We were waiting. Like, are we trading up? Are we going to yeah, get CB? Yeah two yeah. cb one three whatever right, right and right. you know i know just like everybody is like this is the shining question mark the big fat question mark on the season tell me joe in your expert analysis how mm. does kair elam look uh in training camp i mean what can you give us so he looks like a rookie um for me so there's a great deal of uh they're putting him on guys. They, they're putting him on Stefan. They're not, you know, shying away from that. They're not shying away from having him cover Diggs. Or, I'm sorry, Davis. I, I, I haven't necessarily seen him in a situation where he's blanketing one side of the field or necessarily following a receiver. It seems like they're kind of just they're, – they're just rolling defenses right now and they're rolling offenses and kind of just, you know, they're, they're man, manning up, if you will. I don't want to say that he, I have seen him necessarily win or own anybody. He looks, in my opinion, right now, like a rookie that's in his first week of training camp. Does that, it, with his pads on. Like, it, at this point in time for me, as far as Kair Elam goes, um, we all know about the man. We know that he's eager. We know that he wants to learn. We, you know, we all know the story of he's on the plane to Buffalo after getting drafted. He wants the playbook on the Pagula plane so he can begin to learn. So we all know that it's there. But I think you could probably speak more to that that first training camp, that first week and a half as a rookie, a first round draft pick rookie, late round draft pick, right? Like the expectations are probably, I don't know. No, where. totally different, totally different, right? So you, when I when I was drafted in the first round, my expectations were low. They had a starting on. offensive line. They did not expect me to insert and play right away. So the, that's the difference. That's crazy. Yeah, I, got, I, I was so lucky. I mean, I, I can't even tell you. And had I been thrown to the Wolves, Probably would have been a three-year guy, you know, and then out on the street. I, but, I don't know that. I mean, it was intense. But I know you well enough to know that in your head, you had expectations for yourself. Of course, yeah. And, and you know, number one is the playbook. And even though he got it on the plane, I mean, it all looks like, you know, it's written in Cyrillic, for God's sakes, right? So right. it's just, yeah. and then if you get to the point where you're understanding and understand the calls, the alignment, 
you know, it's still coming at you. And those, you know, even in even in training camp, man, the the changes in coverage and protections with respect to motion and uh, and uh, alignments change, you know, snap to snap. Right, so, right. Uh, you know, he might not admit it, but he's definitely drinking through that fire hose. I would say my question to you, though, is, you know, are you seeing the physical attributes that you're hoping? Like is when when uh, wide receivers are breaking, is he too far behind, in your opinion? Does he look like he's got a good step? Is he slipping? Or, or you feel like, you know what, he looks okay. He, do, he doesn't look like a disaster. Yeah, he definitely does not look like a disaster, in my opinion. So Saturday was the first day with pads, and they went with pads, and they went a little bit lighter. Today, Monday, they went with pads, and they were tackling to the ground in certain positions, so run plays, certain things like that. Ka'ir Elam, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he leveled Isaiah McKenzie on Saturday, and Isaiah got up and was a little unhappy about it. Basically, he, I think I think Ka'ir accidentally took him to the ground first day in pads. McKenzie didn't like it very much and kind of got up and chirped at him a little bit. Um, I'd say he's right there. The hard part and the the indistinguishable thing right now is I think that with just like with any rookie, and we've seen it with Tremaine Edmonds for several years, there's a hesitancy, right? Do I trust what I'm seeing? Um, and I don't know that the light bulb has gone off yet, but that doesn't mean that he's not there. The issue at hand is when he's on a guy like Stefan Diggs, Stefan Diggs just sets up his corner so well yeah beautifully it's it's ridiculous like and it's poetry to watch it it doesn't matter who's on him and stefan is the type of receiver that he doesn't necessarily care if you are on his hip like literally he's gonna set you up so that you're on his hip and you think oh he's covered you got blanket you think you're blanketed and then all of a sudden and then all of a sudden he opens his shoulder the ball's right there he catches it and he and he basically waddles backwards out of bounds and you're like and 12 yards 12 yards downfield right i mean so i i think i think the good thing though for kair elam is now he's in a he's in a situation right where he is exposed rep after rep after rep with the cream of the crop and that's the hard thing for rookies to get over even my senior year in college you know, we had 11 games, but I'm not going to tell you that I played against 11 guys of the of the highest caliber. Right, right. But right. when you go to Buffalo and I'm doing one-on-ones, you know, if it's not against Bruce Smith, you know, the step down from Bruce Smith is a step up from, right, right. from you know, 10 of the 11 guys I played against in college. Right. So you're going to see, like, there's going to be a mental and physical – recovery for Elam, you know, and it's how well he rebounds from that. Yeah. You know, you got to have positive self-talk. You got to know that these guys are just going to drag you around the field right. and how well can you stand up next time and, and shadow and make the breaks, Yeah, you know, but he line definitely up does, appropriately. He definitely does not look like a disaster. I don't know that he has flashed yet in camp. What's interesting is Tremaine Edmonds has been. Tremaine has been flashing in camp specifically today, which is great. We have our first super chat from Daniel Frederick. Uh, uh, good old Dan Fred. So this is a uh, uh, Smoker Freddy uh, is who this is. And I love the spelling of his last name because it's spelled exactly like my middle name, Frederick, not Frederick. So just in case anybody's wondering or keeping notes, my middle name is Frederick, not Frederick. But uh, Dan says, here's a Super Chat message. Get me an even dollar amount button for Super Chat. I wish I could. I, <laughs> I don't have the ability to necessarily control that. He said, you both are going to look great when I dunk you in my dunk take. Go Bills. Are we allowed to talk about this? Is this this is a secret? Is this a secret message? I don't know, man. It's his house. Hey, all I know is that if I'm going to be slinging it at that sweet grill slash smoker 40 foot deal, I mean, I'm going to be hot. So, yes, you can dunk me in the uh, the dunk tank because I'll probably be sweating like Joe in 84 degrees at camp. Poor guy, unpadded, no reps. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to love it, man. Put me on the grill and put me in the dunk tank. Fill that thing with 40 bags of ice, I dare you. <laughs> Dan, thank you for the super chat. That was hysterical. But, uh, yeah, I don't know how much we're allowed to talk about that. I don't even want to, like, name it or call it out for anything. So, But we'll just leave it for what it is. We'll let sleep- sleeping dogs lie. So it's going to come up. People are like, what is he talking about? Where's this dunk tank? And is John yeah. Feeney going to be in a dunk tank somewhere? Oh, I'm going to be in a dunk tank. <laughs> That's right. And I'll tell you, I ain't going to be in a Speedo. There is, you know. But now I know I need to change your clothes at the very least. <laughs> What else you got for me I, uh, after Kair Elam? Oh, no, this is so much fun, man. I can't stand it. Uh, 
obviously near and dear to my heart, the big guys, right? So I know there's been, ooh, everybody, like beyond uh, Elam, people are talking about what's going on with the offensive line. And since you're there, yeah, you yeah. Know, I think you could probably give us a quick run through uh, left or right, please, because I think left or right is the only way to go. Well, they are, they are clearly um, rotating guys uh, with liberty as far as that goes. However, I would say this Saturday, Deion Dawkins was not at practice. Uh, everybody knows that. Or if you don't, I'm, I'm letting you know for the first time. They asked Mitch Morse in the press conference where Deion was. He said, actually, we don't know. We were just told that he's got some personal stuff he's dealing with and pray for him is what it what basically was said. Uh, however, today, Monday, I'm happy to report to you that not only was Deion Dawkins at practice, but nice moves. Look at that. Oh, and he's cradled the ball, avoids the strip. Deion Dawkins heading downfield toward the end zone. Double clutching, single clutching, eyes to the sky, general celebration, air under the feet, ball raised, and the Bills win. Insert game here, Deion Dawkins, MVP of the game. Uh oh, until then. Oh my God, he could have twisted a cankle or a knee on that. What's he thinking? So Deion was back today. That ball was interesting because it was actually deflected out of uh, out of uh, Khalil Sh uh, Shakir's hands, and then actually was tipped by a defender and just landed in Dion's lap, and Dion <laughs> took it to the house. Whether or not he would have made it, I don't know. The defender it looked like gave up at one point, but uh, it was a fun day as far as that goes for Dion to be back and and to get that. But uh, it looked like from left to right, it was Dion Dawkins, Bobby Hart, Mitch Morse, Quisenberry. Uh, and then uh, uh, it wasn't Spencer Brown. Who was on the right side? It's, it's Tommy escaped. Doyle? Uh, no. Well, Tommy was for a while, and then Tommy got hurt. I want to say it was Mance, but I'm not exactly sure. But from an offensive line standpoint, I tweeted out today, the most impressed thing that I've seen or impressive thing that I've seen in training camp in the last two days, and, and I get to go again tomorrow, which is awesome, and then the return of the red and blue game is on Friday, and I'll be at that. I've got four tickets that the family's going. Is the contested catch situation for the wide receivers. I don't know if the Bills are doing it on purpose. I don't know if it's part of, you know, Ken Dorsey's plan. I know that Yak has been a large conversation uh, in this offseason to include with Josh Allen. I've got to be better about, you know, give, giving my guys an opportunity to run. Right. But the, the I would Yak, agree with that. The, 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 the blanket coverage, the contested catch type routes that the guys are running and in seven on seven are catching is pretty incredible to watch seeing defenders draped on them uh watching them just body shake do different things to turn a certain way to set up the defender it's just been incredible and catch the ball it's it's been very very to include isaiah hodgins isaiah hodgins today was held by his waist by i don't remember what defender was on him but he was held by his waist uh and finally he was let go and case keaton threw the ball over the top and isaiah just barely missed the ball clearly after being held like the, the fight that's in them all that to say this i'm excited to see what this wide receiver group is going to do if the offensive yeah. line can give josh allen time because right, right now in its iteration on saturday it was not good saturday was bad saturday did was you watch very... did you watch uh one-on-one -on -one pass yes so saturday was very very bad for the offensive line today i think there was uh four interceptions five sacks be based largely because that's in team though that's I'm talking about I'm talking about one v one pass pro where it's O line versus I did D line. Not, sorry, I did not see that. So they okay. they move guys off the field and they go to a separate practice field for different things when they're doing different things. As far as that goes, they're not. Why do they make the big guys run for a quarter they do, mile? They do make the big guys run, but the Jeez. offensive line. So so Mitch Morse has been solid. Uh, Quisenberry has been solid. Uh, Cody Ford has been in the game a little bit. I haven't really got a chance to watch him a whole lot. It was great to have Dion. I think. We're not going to know what happens until Roger Saffold is back, right? Until Ryan Rick Bates is back, until we can get the five guys out in front. And I don't know necessarily what that timeline is. Is it time to worry? Probably not. Um, but it's interesting to watch what's going on. So it, from an offensive line standpoint, they've struggled a little bit, is what I would say. That, that defensive line is hug hungry. That defensive line is yeah. hungry. Yeah, they need to be. They've, right? got, a lot, I they've mean got a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, there was a couple times today where Vaughn Miller was in the backfield with a running back by himself. 
And Von Miller was just like, whoop, as the running back ran by him. And it's like, yeah, he's totally toast. Like, <laughs> that running back is not getting away from Von Miller. It's just not happening. So, wow. yeah. It's yeah. just so exciting, Joe. I yeah. mean, hey, you brought up Shakir, too. So, I mean, what was that fourth round pick? We get him out of Boise State. So, yep. yep. Yeah, so he is. What's, looked, that, what's he looking like? He's looked good. He had a couple. He had a couple balls go through his hands today. Probably three, um, and I think one was intercepted. One was caught by uh, Deion Dawkins, and then one just ended up on the ground. But by and large, he is. He's playing well. He's 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 living in that second string uh, uh, slot spot. So as the receivers go, it's obviously Diggs, Davis, right? So X, Y, Z, Isaiah McKenzie, and Isaiah McKenzie looks like he is untouchable. He looks uncatchable. He looks untouchable. He looks like he is the next coming of X player. Like pick a guy in the slot. Isaiah McKenzie looks very, very good. How about the guy that went to Miami? Does uh, he look like him? Which guy? Oh, you talk about Waddle or uh, not Waddle? Uh, uh, Terry Kill. Well, Terry Terry Kill's an X. Terry. He's not. Yeah, a, he's not a Z guy. I'm just saying the the look. The second string wide receivers uh, are Isaiah Hodgins in the X by and large, um, and then. Khalil Shakir is playing in that in that Z role in that slot role, and then once in a while in the second team they're putting Isaiah Hodgins in that slot. Khalil looks good. All the receivers look good. All of them. I mean, it's when they can't get off their blocks, when they can't get off of their their corners, they're still making contested catches, which is great. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens when it kind of really begins to come together that first preseason game. What on the thirteenth? So yeah. Well, look, you know, Khalil or. Uh... Uh, Shakir, right? So dropping balls. I mean, it's a different ball coming from Josh Allen. So yeah. we'll give him a we'll give him a little bit of time to uh, to acclimate, but we can't have drop balls. I, I got to tell you, it, you know, that's part of it, right? So you leave the season having lost the Super Bowl or at least made the playoffs, and it's a different feel coming right. back. Right. You know, when you have a really crappy season and you're coming back to training camp, you know, it, it's more of a slog. They're like, what are we looking forward to? I mean, we're terrible. It's basically just like what Cleveland must feel like all the time in Detroit, right? <laughs> we didn't even talk about it. We probably could have done news of the day. No, nah, we're not doing that. I, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't want to, you know, maybe, maybe I keep my week. opinions to myself on a lot of different things, and that'll be one of them. Yeah, maybe next week, but... <laughs> I'll see. I had a rant. I had a rant yesterday uh, about people peeing on the toilet seat. I don't know if you're caught that. I right? saw that. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I, I thought you would uh, use the word urine rather than uh, piss, which kind of I find to be a little uh, distasteful. Not that I'm a choir boy by any means, but I was problem, like, wow. The problem with that conversation is the fact it's what I started with. It doesn't matter if you are at school. It doesn't matter if you're in a stadium. It doesn't matter if you're in a movie theater. It doesn't matter if you're in a restaurant. It doesn't matter if you are at church. Every men's room stall you go into, somebody is pissed on the toilet seat. I just know it's not that hard. You can use your shoe. You can kick up the seat. You can get some toilet paper, lift up the seat. I mean, I don't know. Be a better human. Be a better human. What else you got for me? What's next? What's next? Wide receiver group, by the way, is the conversation uh, of this camp, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that's nice to take the pressure off of Elam. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I'm glad Jordan is out there. Oh, I yeah. think, um, you know, that that's caused people a lot of anxiety. Everybody wants to sign him. I'm sure they're I'm sure they're working on it. Uh, you know, it's hard to it's hard to assess the linebacker group, I think, for you or for anybody watching training camp. But I'm just excited to hear that, you know, the defensive line looks hungry. That to me, you know, with with uh, Elam back there. They've got to rely on Von Miller and the rest of the guys. Rousseau, Rousseau's got to graduate, get better. Epinesa has got to show. He, got a, he, we a, got, he had a great sack on Saturday, Epinesa did. Uh, and, and we got two big guys in the middle now to help yes. out uh, Ed. So yeah. tell me what you think about the guys up front. Dude, the, the defensive line as a whole is just, like I said, they're just they're, they're playing at a different energy level. Tim Settle did not play today, did not practice today. He's got some soreness in his groin, they said. Uh, but Daquan Jones is basically a force to be reckoned with. The dude cannot be moved. Um, obviously, you know, you've got Jordan Phillips back out there, and we can talk about the fight uh, on Saturday. And then there was mm -hmm. a, there were actually two scuffles today, um, which I have a question for you later in the show just as it pertains to fighting in camp. Um, they're just – I'm all for it. There's just a – there's there's something to be said for – and I've lived in this space, and I don't want to brag, but – I. When it comes to everybody has not everybody people that are 
equipped this way, people that have the capability, the ability, the innate ability to raise the level of the people around them, it's just something that happens to them. It's just something that they carry with them. Like what comes, you do for me. Not, not, not has nothing to do with this at all. When it comes to music and playing live music, for some reason, I have this innate character, this innate ability to raise the level of the people around me. Vaughn Miller is kind of that guy. There's an energy on this defense right now, especially amongst the defensive line, that I don't think was there maybe since Bruce left. Oh, maybe well, when Mario, let's see maybe if he when, can do it 17 weeks in a row, baby. Maybe when Mario Williams was here. When Mario Williams was here, that defense was stupid. It was just so freaking good. Yeah, we that's missed when, that, right? That's when Jerry we need Hughes, some breakout stuff to happen. Right, but it feels like as much as guys bring their own energy, and maybe you can speak to this, it feels like the presence of Von Miller on the field is just a different expectation, right? Beyond the coach's expectation, beyond their own personal expectation. I know the fun cliche is, you know, you got to play for the guy next to you. I just wonder if that's beginning to happen. It's like, oh, Von Miller's over there. Well, I think that's that there probably starts in the meeting room. Right, you have no credibility on the field unless you know you lead in the meeting room, also. But how you do know, you say you, that when it's Vaughn Miller? Vaughn Miller has well, I'm, no, I'm just saying he's he's likely doing both, right? Right, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, you know, you, can, you typically can't have one without the other. So, I just I'm happy. I guess my reaction is I'm glad to hear you're saying it, yep. right? I mean, yep. that's 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 one of the reasons he's here. Right to lead a group, to motivate a group, to set a level of expectation of performance that people can achieve and need to achieve on a consistent basis. Yeah, and that it, it feels it feels like that is kind of what's happening with the defense. Tremaine Edmonds has flashed, and that that's kind of the big thing. I, I heard it on a couple of different radio programs that you know what we need from Tremaine Edmonds. He's he's a solid player. He's a good player. He's in plays all the time, but you need those splash plays. Even his coach. Leslie Frazier, I think, said it in the offseason going into his fifth season, you know, coming off of a going into a contract year. The determining factor of whether or not he is going to be a Buffalo Bill going forward is going to be those splash plays. He has been making them. So there was a couple plays on Saturday. There was a couple plays today where he was all alone in the backfield, like on one of the flats where he read the play, read what the running back was going to do. And right before the Deion Dawson. Hey, uh, I don't know if everybody knows Joe's audio sounds kind of weird right now. What'd you do? Did you click? Uh, Is it really? The That's better. I didn't do it. Did any you have that uh, reverb pedal that you use when you're playing guitar? I have no reverb pedal. Does it sound weird? It it's better now. It went out for a second. I did not. I could say this. So let, let me add a little bit of uh, color yeah. to this. Yeah. It didn't matter. Um, you know, even when we were in the Super Bowl years, training camp, typically the defense looks great in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's a good thing because this offense is really, really potent, right? So for our defense to look good right now really makes me feel really good. Me feel very optimistic. Yeah. Uh, and, and I know it's kind of hard, right? New offensive coordinator, I don't know what you can diagnose as far as difference goes between – formations and motions or running plays or anything of that nothing nature. yet but yeah nothing yet. it's hard right i mean those guys are they're doing like chaos math and we're right. down here doing like beginning algebra which i use every day by the way i, I know you all use algebra every day <laughs> there's a lot of coaches on this there's a lot of coaches in the fray screaming at guys which you're probably very familiar with right yeah i mean <laughs> <laughs> and it, it very much seems like play happens. that's why like that's why when you're like a former football player like you know like you don't really have to tread water around us like <laughs> my feelings have all been wiped out right <laughs> i spent four years in high school getting screamed at and five years in college and 11 in the nfl like there is nothing you can see you can't get close enough to me and spit enough tobacco juice and scream and demean me enough for me to actually really care after what i've been through I'm like so, yeah whatever so like, play you... happens and regardless of whether play went good or bad 
Coach XYZ is this close to the player screaming his brains out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and players just running back to the huddle. Yes. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And then the other side's like, you know, when when the uh, when the defense has a good play, then the offense is pissed because they're all hyped up. And the next thing you know, boom. And then people are starting to throw punches. That makes for good training camp, man. That's a great segue. Yeah. So Did you gonna... get in a fight, Joe? I thought maybe you get in a fight in the in the stands or something. You're very, uh, you know, you're a very angry person. Not until the knee is fixed. Once the knee is fixed, <laughs> it'll be more. Oh, I could have done that when I was in town, man. We just put you on the butcher block. Your wife's got some sharp knives. Hard pass. Hard pass. Dude, so... I got YouTube. <laughs> Uh, yeah, knee surgery is coming after the home opener, but uh, that's a that's that's a HIPAA violation. So you've now caused me to violate HIPAA and all of the HIPAA rules. I, don't I didn't know say are. anything. You said it. You offered it. It's not like I stole your PHI and like posted it on the interweb. I've got some questions for you, my friend. So with that, bring it. Let's move to our last segment, which is brought to you by Q42, and John has the read for Q42. Oh, man, Iman and Bridget. Thank you, Q42. I got a care package in the mail today, bro. Oh, I, so I totally did. Hold on. I got a picture of it. I don't know if it's going to translate. I meant to put it up. But look, uh, can you see that? Not very well. No, uh, your, blur, your blur thing is taking over. There, there it is. is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Hey, I do that with my new loan for house, too, if I could like hold a loan up to the up to the picture there. Hey, Grills Mafia, expectations for the Buffalo Bills are at an all-time high. The last time they were this high, John was in full uniform. That's me. <laughs> with, ele with elevated on the field expectations comes elevated tailgate expectations. Get things fired up with the quintessential tailgate. Essential, we're talking about Q42 sauces and rubs. The KC sauce is everything you want. Sweet, tangy, touch of heat made with local honey. The Carolina is a fusion of bold vinegar and sweetness from that same local honey while packing a big mustard punch. The KC Sweet Rub is a crowd pleaser. It goes on anything and everything, meat, veggies, potatoes, you name it, including the rim of your cocktail glass. The Texas Brisket Coffee Rub is made for beef. Coarse pepper, salt, and spices blended with Tim Horton's coffee. Wow. Get your bottle at Q42 barbecue.com that's q42 barbecue.com use the code feed a show all caps to get all your 15 percent off your order i gotta tell you i love it i love it i love the natural ingredients i i i, I love it we used it tonight so we had it actually on pork chops uh and you will notice because you are always the critic um if you look under fina show what's that what's that first word Talk uh, on the soon. screen on the screen on the screen i fixed the i fixed the misspelled word receive finally oh you did oh, that's so funny <laughs> q42 receive god i usually catch those too you did. seriously though <laughs> oh i did did i catch that yeah you were the one that you gave me a hard time all last season because i never fixed it well i fixed it so i just wanted you to know that I fixed it's it. a curse people it's... say it's a blessing and a curse it's definitely a curse <laughs> so this is my question for you um yes i'd like to hear it I love what I love about this show and what I love about our friendship and what I love about I think what other people love it too is just the, the, the candidness and the transparency and the the look that we get into because even when and I've I've interviewed current players and we see a lot of shows networks whatever interview current players and they're always a little veiled right they're never super candid they're never super transparent and and being that you're a post career Ostrowski and the other guys that I've had on, you guys are kind of open with the way things are. So for me, there's a, there's just an, an interesting connection between the past and the current. Um, but from a general camp kind of just experience as a player, I know that there's a lot of different rules now as it pertains to the CBA. I had to tell a guy today, well, I just don't understand older dude. Back in my day, Frank Reich held the punts or held the place, held for the place kicker. And it's like, he can't do that anymore. Why? And I'm like, because, because the he's CBA. the head coach of uh, Indiana. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I was like, he can't do that anymore because they're only allowed to be on the field for a certain amount of time. And the backup quarterback has to be on that side of the field, not on that side of the field with the four special teams guys basically drinking water and goofing off. Right. Um, so 
when you when you talk about the differences you know how different different was was it back then compared to maybe the way that it is now from just your perspective wow well you know i think some of that stuff you know it just gets lost in the details right, right. i mean you just you wake up every day and there's a new rule there's a new normal and I can't keep track of all the rules. Like when you were just saying that, I was like, what the hell is he talking about? I, I still use <laughs> algebra every day, but this is definitely new math. Uh, man, I, I, I just don't try to get that micro on it. And with respect to what you said about, you know, retired players are a lot more open. You know, there's no more fear, right? I mean, I, I don't have a repercussion fear of, of anything really. With respect to what I say, nobody cares. The NFL is not going to find me. Roger Goodell is not going to buffoon his way through some mistake I made. Did I say Roger Goodell was a buffoon? You did. You did. You did. Uh, yeah, you did. Well, look, I think that there are going to be wonks, right, everywhere. And if you want to drill down and dig deep and, you know, scratch at the center of the earth and, and try to peel back the onion all the way down to the core have at it man i'm i'm right. probably not going on that trip with you i'm just going to be the guy at the bar that says i'll have another, another bourbon <laughs> what are you drinking by the way i'm drinking russell's reserve i got a bottle of it for my birthday i'm not big time like you i'm not i got it for my birthday i didn't pay for it it was free <laughs> no. so i do have a bourbon buddy lives yeah. down the street oh, bourbon uh, buddy. i do have a bourbon buddy and he's all about the new bourbon. Like you got to come over and smoke cigars and try this new bourbon. I skip the cigars because I think they're nauseating. They're disgusting. They're disgusting. But so I have a like a gallon of bullet, and I'm the only one who ever drinks it. So in two years, when that's empty, I'll get you something. I love bullet. Bullet is great. <laughs> it's fine. You know, I'm not a connoisseur. That's funny. I'm not necessarily either. I know which ones I like and which ones I don't like. But we got to get ourselves a bourbon sponsor at some point but uh next question for you so back in the whiskey day, we could do whiskey because bourbon of course is kentucky but whiskey can be from anywhere i mean yep, yep. we've got we've got a, a a distillery down here in southern arizona it's called del bac and they, they do some pretty nice whiskeys i'll drink that next time so i have two more questions for you and uh one of them is this so when it comes to defense versus offense as it pertains to I guess how I w would want to say it is just uh, to say it, Joe. We we hear as fans, we hear this whole idea, this notion that you know the defense is always in front of the offense or always is always ahead of the offense when mm -hmm. camp opens. What I want to know is, is that was it the same when you were playing, and is it a situation where the offenses are more complex and the defenses? I hate to use the word simplistic not simplistic but reactionary right the the defense is just different you line up disguise whatever you're going to do and then you and you react to what the offense is doing but why is it that the defense is generally when camp opens is more ahead if you will than an offense it's not about being more ahead it's about just the style of you know we talk about continuity in the offensive line right you know there's continuity between josh and timing out of a break to get the ball you know to to McKenzie or right. to Diggs or, you know, the running back is feeling his way out in space on a screen and really get dialed in to the timing and the feel of it until you watch film. And defenses certainly are not simple like they used to be. I mean, everybody's disguising, right? You have multiple, multiple um, uh, position groups. So... I just think, you know, you, 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 there's a little bit more to being aggressive and, and getting the success than being fine-tuning an offense. It's a little mm -hmm. bit more like the difference of, you know, thrash metal being defense and Tchaikovsky being offense. And that's right, not to right. disparage defensive players, even though I'm pretty sure all their IQs are somewhere in the middle double digits. Um <laughs> But it just takes a little bit longer. Like, and you know, you when you design a football play, 
well, a formation and in motion and then timing of release. You know, the expectation is that you're going to dictate what sort of defensive alignment comes up. But if the defense throws you a different alignment, different coverage, then it doesn't roll out. The timing changes. And then you yeah. go, like, as an offensive coordinator, I'm like, oh, well, I expected them to be, you know, in cover one with a strong roll down and the whip over here or the will. But they actually ran it with cover two and, you know, uh, inside leverage on the wide receivers. So now I have to rethink that play in the event that we run this play against that defensive alignment. And then I got to have all my guys on the outside understand their, how their releases are going to change. So that's a good point. So like literally. Of since course the, it's a good point. I said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So since the dawn of whatever the format is that we're currently in, I'm just going to go right over that. Lit, literally, the teams are lining up against themselves for a month straight. Is there yeah. ever a moment in camp where it's like offensive coordinator says the defensive coordinator or vice versa? Dial it down, bro. Like give us a give us a chance. Is there ever a moment? No, where- uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, you know, the the only dial it down moments you see are like, hey, this the tempo here is full speed or the tempo here is half speed. Right. You know, st- st- your, your guys need to play appropriately. Cut out the BS. And then secondly, there's always um you know, like you always have as the offense, you get to say, hey, we're going to rerun that rep. Everybody back on the line. Yeah. And that's your kind of like do over. But you're not going to like walk out there as the O coordinator, you know, the D coordinator and say, dude, come on, man. We're trying to like make something up here because that's not how the game happens in real life. You, you know, we've done this in the past and I'm sure they still do it. Like you'll have a variety of plays that you're prepping for the week. And if it looks like dog shit in practice, you know, that play falls down on the priority list. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, we got the scout team whipping our ass on this formation, this running play, or this pass play, and we can't get it done. You know, what do we think that the starting defense for the Jets is going to do? Like, why? Like, that, that better slide down. That better get like a little red asterisk next to it. Right, and it seems like that does happen. I was just more talking about just sometimes, for instance, Saturday, first day in pads, the Bills are missing three or four, three three of their starting offensive linemen. The defensive front is the starting defensive front, and they're coming after it. And there's just I an stopped, aspect. I stopped listening a long time ago. Nobody cares, Joe. No, on, so, on so, game so we're day. Back. We're back to Septem- the little, the little, the little. September the little. 8th, man, the Rams aren't going to care who lines up, and the guys that are there now – need to battle that's why Kair elam is taking reps against the baddest mfers that we can throw at him because you need to grow up as soon as you're in there and it happened to me my second year (laughs) there was there was no rest for the wicked like yeah this is it dude and uh it was hard (laughs) i mean it was it wasn't easy man i was holy cow yeah i was like, you need to give us some meat I, off like, the bone, or are you just gonna keep? Do teasing? I be, like? Do I belong here? Wow. Do I be, do I belong here? You know, when Bruce Smith goes by you, and it's like all you feel is the wind and his cologne, and you basically didn't see the guy, or Daryl and Bruce run a game with the tight end and me, or the tackle and the guard and I get ear holed by Daryl and I'm laying on the floor <laughs> on the ground and everything's ringing and spinning you know sure I mean I can't I just remember getting hit ear holed by Daryl thinking to myself I will never get that hard hit that hard again unless I fall off a roof onto a pallet of bricks <laughs> on my head <laughs> on my head that's why I love Daryl. Classic. All right, last question, then we're going to get up on out of here. Uh, this has been a fun show so far. Wait, did we cover everything? We have covered everything. So last <laughs> but question. I, is, but I still have drink left. You're drinking slow, dude. What is the problem? All I got left is a big, giant, circular, like, ice I ball. Don't, I don't I don't. want to slur any more than I normally do. <laughs> well, that's from the CTE, from the ear holing. <laughs> that's not because of the whiskey. <laughs> that was offsides, bro. <laughs> Hold oh, on dude. a second. Hold on a second. Oh, he's leaving. Why are you leaving? Mimi, I know you... where's where's my flag? I Once throw a show. Flag on Joe Miller. Once a show, he's got to like reference the family and audibly talk to the family. <laughs> hey, listen, Mimi is like she should be our producer. Like she's so into it. She helps me with everything. I'm good with it. Like bring her I'm on. I'm it. totally good with it. So, camp right. fights. 
So I, I camp fights are a big thing right now because Josh Allen started a camp fight on Saturday. Uh oh. Oh, flag on Joe Miller. <laughs> Offsides. CTE reference. Can you tell Mimi that we're not friends anymore? Just like that. So Mimi, no... Joe said that you and he are no longer friends. <laughs> Come say hello. She's going right, to be so... blurry. She's going to be bl well, kind of blurry. No, she's, not good. Blurry. She's, she's good. All right. So the question is camp fights, right? Josh Allen started a camp fight uh, on Saturday, and it wasn't really a fight. So I got I had the opportunity to basically have a conversation with a couple players, offensive players, after Sunday after practice on Saturday, and they were like, "Yeah, it was a fight, but not really." Josh, you no, know, the the offense wasn't playing well, and Josh was trying to get like some energy to the team, like let them mm -hmm. know, just send a message, if you will. You know, Diggs and Davis are jumping on the pile at the end. You know, obviously those guys aren't going to put themselves at risk. So, seriousness. What is the level of seriousness and concern when it comes to camp fights? Because we had two more today, and they were on the second stringers. Uh, I'm trying to think. Okay, well, did they involve a quarterback? They did not. They they involved Real fight. a second to third string barrier wide receiver and a second to third string barrier corner. Did uh, you get film? There was no – no, I didn't get film. But Damn. So what is the level of – I mean, at what point in time are you like, this team is a shit show? Or is it like, no, that's right. Oh, we, we are like, we're not even near that. I mean – Well, no, know, that's what I'm saying. But what is the level versus we don't have fights in camp because we're all really nice to each other? Yeah, that doesn't exist. That's silliness. So, um, <clears throat> all right, let's address the Josh Allen thing. I totally get it, right? The offense isn't doing well. It's kind of a let's get the blood pumping – and I knew, like, as soon as I saw the quarterback starting a fight and it started to, like, cause this kind of huddle thing, I was like, yeah, that's not real because anybody who gets even close to the quarterback is going to be in trouble. So that uh, that was like, yeah, let's do this. And then the guy flies in over the top at the end. Davis, I was Davis. like, it's crowd surfing, bro. We're in, like, alternative two music. Of yeah, two the first of them, one right? was Davis. The second one was Diggs. Dude. Oh my God! I was at the. It reminds me of a couple of shows I went at the Trafalmador in the '90s. Man, Jerry Ostrowski and I were throwing these these girls up, so they were getting crowd surfing around. Oh my God. Yeah, that's what that was. But uh, to your point, tempers flare because everybody wants to make the roster. I don't know right. if I told you the story about Mark Maddox. You know, who like leveled me. Nope. And. My bad. I thought it was like a 50% drill, drill, and he just, there should have been like a eulogy. I got wrecked so hard. And I always thought Mark hated me, you know, because like, I was like, that was totally vindictive. I would have fought him, but I don't even think I knew like which way was up and down. So I was like, oh, this is horrible, embarrassing, hurt my toe, <laughs> awful. It was a bad toe injury too. Dubbed, I cried. Dubbed, I mean, dubbed, I dubbed your toe. I should no. I should no. No sprain. Anyway, so I revisited that with Mark about two years ago. You know, we put the swords away. You know, and I was like, dude, I thought you hated me. And he's like, I'm just trying to get a job, man. I felt like I was on the bubble. I'm fighting. Like I want to make a roster. Right. I right. Like, I was like, that was really selfish of me looking at it from only my perspective. Right. So these guys are fighting for a roster spot. And as long as it's the twos, have at it. You know, you'll see maybe a fight or two in camp between a starter and a starter or starter and a, and a, and a uh, an aspiring starter, second team guy, mm -hmm. to put it nicely. But, I mean, you literally have to have a fight every practice that is helmets off, swinging helmets, trying to blind a guy um, viciously for I would expect anybody to say this is a problem beyond gotcha. Gotcha. guys fight. So I mean, look, the... <laughs> you're like like taking in red meat and lifting weights and mashing heads, and everybody's like supposed to like picky promise after every practice. I love you, bro. We're full of love. That doesn't win football games. Well, Josh Allen did say that uh, when we get in the locker room, it is all love. That uh, something to that effect. But uh, so tell us, were you ever in a camp fight, and what was it like? What happened? So I was in a camp fight. It was like uh -oh. kind of like a post camp fight. Um, we were back from Fredonia. We were practicing on that field outside of Rich Stadium. Yeah, yeah. On right. the, I don't, yeah, on the outside of it over there. And it was uh, the bubble, right in the bubble. 
No, no, we weren't in the bubble. It was on the I was on the grass. Oh, gotcha. And I can't remember. We were in team and uh there was basically kind of you know, the last cuts were coming. And if you looked at the at the depth chart, you knew that one of these two young defensive ends had to go. Mm-hmm. Just it's just the math, right? So it was I don't I wouldn't say it was a hundred percent tempo and he, he was at a hundred percent. And I was a little longer in the tooth at the time, you know, maybe six years in. And he, you know, he got up kind of little, a little excessive after the, what would, would have been the whistle. And I was like, dude, you need to settle down. And he's like, screw you, man. I whipped your ass. And I'm like, yeah, okay, here we go. And, you know, one thing, like the, the cardinal rule is you do not take your helmet off and start swinging your helmet at a guy. That is right. N-O, right? Unless you're Miles Garrett. Unless you're Miles Garrett, but you get up under there and you you you'll grab that face mask and you want to get up under the chin or down low, right above the pelvic bone. You know you don't hit yep. a guy in that. Yep, that yep, ain't yep. cool either, right? Yep, you yep. don't kick at that, but you go low if you can. Anyway, it it was a it's a scrap. It lasts for about you know 20 seconds, and at the end you're so tired you can't even raise your arms anymore, and you're like, why did I do that? And, you know. but, but what is but what is the uh, you're going to see the guy in the locker room, right? So you come around the corner, like coming out of the shower, you got your towel on and there he is. Bang in your face. Hey, bro. Sorry about that. Or did you just fist bump? No, you, you kind of look at him and go, um, hey, you brought it today, man. Good on you. That's it. I like it. You know, I like it. That's actually if you're if you're going to carry a grudge into the locker room, it's got to be something. A hell of a lot bigger than that. Usually yeah. something personal. If it's on the field, it's on the field. Or, you know, if you want to continue it in the locker room, you can just affirm, hey, dude, you're a total douchebag. And gotcha. I had to let you know you were. Yeah, I called you out. Oh, screw you. And I'm like, all right, well, screw you too. You good? Yeah. We good? Good. But you're never, you know, I don't think I ever saw a fight in the locker room. And certainly not a fight in the locker room after a fight that was on the field. Gotcha. It's settled there. But yeah. in the end, like, the only people that lose are the guys in the fight because you're so tired. I mean, the end of training camp, you're like, you know, you're fighting for every minute of sleep you get between practices. And that, that's what I want. So I've seen a lot about guys interacting with fans and, and signing autographs, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's um, I saw Von Miller videos, Josh Allen videos, Stefan Diggs. I just want everybody to know and – it might have been a little different back then. I still think practices are hard, certainly mentally. I don't know how hard they are physically, but to the level that we were. When that practice ends, man, you're just thinking about two things. I'm going to get lunch and I'm going to get my feet up. And you're walking off and you're, you're walking through a crowd of people and, you know, they all want your autograph. And every minute you spend there signing autographs is a minute that you aren't eating or relaxing, closing your eyes, rejuvenating, recovering, if you got to practice that afternoon. Right. So, uh, you know, I did, uh, one training camp, I kind of avoided the fans a little bit because I was just worn out. I was I had an injury and I was just kind of selfish. I need to recover. I kind of did a little bit of a dish. Uh, probably about 50% of the time. And I always look back on that and regret it. Really? Yeah, because I I typically would sign autographs after practice for a minimum of 10 minutes. But in the heyday of the Buffalo Bills, I could have signed autographs for an hour right. after morning practice, right? But then, you know, practices were hard and it was hot. Like it was 84 degrees out. <laughs> And you just, you wanted to get air conned, you know, you wanted to cool off and to recover because you were going back out there. It was 84 degrees out there. <laughs> so I guess my message is like at one point, so when I was signing autographs, you're sitting there in the golf cart because at Fredonia, you had a golf cart. You're, so you sit in your golf cart, you're signing autographs. And at some point you're like, I have to go. So you'd say, yeah, I would stop signing and I would say, listen, everybody, I just want you to know that I'm signing two more. I love you all, but I can't, I have to go. And I would only do that after I signed for like 10 minutes. So then you sign one and then I would say, this is the last one 
have a great day. And really, just one more. And I just one more. And I'd always say the same thing. I was like, but if I sign one more, then I'll be have been a liar. That had to have been it, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. So I, when when they sign, uh, you know, just be appreciative. If they don't, and they typically do, something's going on. Yeah. They had a crappy practice. Right. They have lives. They have families. Um, you know, just because you're out there on the practice field doesn't mean your wife isn't having an enormously hard time getting their mortgage because they didn't use house mortgage, right? Yep. So, you know, they, they have issues uh, that they have to attend to. So yep. I, I love it. When I see those videos, I love it. But I also know that if they don't, there's a reason they don't. Yeah, for sure. It, one of, it, we're going to leave on this. One of my favorite stories is Travis Henry, uh, who I think you blocked for. Did you block for Travis? A little bit. Yep. So Travis Henry was <sighs> – not the wisest man in the world at times, right? We'll, we'll leave it at that. But when it came to fans and it came to interaction, the man was a saint. I remember specifically one time Quaker Crossing in Orchard Park, where Target is now, walking in and Travis is there. And he there's, there's a sea of kids around him, 20, 25, 30 kids around him. And he's talking to them. He's signing stuff for them. And literally, he says at one point, guys, my movie started 20 minutes ago. I have to go yeah. like, like, like he just, he was great. And I saw him around Buffalo a ton of times. I saw him at the bowling alley. I saw him at subway like five times. Like I saw him all over the place, but that was just who he was. He was just very much like, kind of like you said, like he would just, he understood that it's about them, right? It's about the little kids. Yeah. So which yeah. is really, really cool. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been tuned into the off tackle with John Feeney show brought to you by the market dominator on the Buffalo rumblings vodcast network presented by picasso's pizza i'm your host the host of the show joe miller my name is uh or my name is joe miller you can find me on twitter at joe miller wired sorry got that backwards next to me over there john fina john where can they find you i don't know uh tucson arizona i'm on twitter at john fina i think i'm on instagram at john fina 70 although i don't know how to work instagram so i don't do it are you on uh, Instagram? Do I follow I think you on I Instagram? Am. You do. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, follow me for uh, pointless and uninspiring uh, posts, which are infrequent. But if you do post something and I think it's funny, I will add what I think is funny. Don't take it seriously. Everything is tongue in cheek. Yes. Uh, no is politics. Mr. Sarkis. And no politics, and we're good to go. Awesome. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we'll see everybody next week. Great thanks to all the sponsors of the show. Thank you so much for everybody who has joined us and hung with us for the entire show. We went a little bit longer than an hour, but it was fun. I had a good time. It's good to be back, yeah? I had a great time. I can't believe it. I'm so nervous. <laughs> you are not nervous. You Any last amazing. words before we get out of here? Uh, the last words we always say, Joe Miller. Which is? Go Bills. <laughs>